complex, the presence of counsel, the defendant and the jury. And Mike, would you please collect the transcripts, folks? Can you please pass those down to Mike uh, Wildermuth, our bailiff? <clears throat> All right, Mr. Barker, you may proceed. Thank you. Uh, right before the break, Detective, I was asking how cordial you were. Um, now, is there, as a detective, when you're interviewing some somebody, is it uh, is it your practice to try to build rapport early on in the interview? Yes. And what would be the purpose for that? Well, We'd want to build rapport with somebody because, especially in an interview like this, we're about to ask personal and sometimes invasive questions into somebody's life. So you don't want to go directly into that line of questioning. You want to start off by hopefully making them feel a bit comfortable talking with you. All right. Now, we talked uh, also before the break about uh, the defendant uh, saying or stating that he hadn't been outside of Arizona in the last six months, and he talked about that. He also said, well, you asked him if he had told anybody he was going to be in Farmington or to travel to Farmington, and his response was, no, ma'am, I pretty much just call my family once every couple weeks. What was, based on the history in his phone, what was the, the history about his phone conversations that day on January 18th? Well, as we've talked about, there were multiple phone conversations with his brother, Sam, on that day. We had Sam testify in the case, um, and he gave an estimate. What was the approximate amount of time the defendant was on the phone with Sam Gooch? So I added up the time, and in total, he was on, they were on the phone for about 93 minutes that day. And just to be specific, that day is January 18, right? Yes. Okay. Now, the defendant said in the interview that... Uh, quote, I swung by the church about 2 p.m. to check the service times. Do you recall that? I do. What did the investigation actually show about when he was actually in Farmington? Well, he stopped to get gas at one point in Farmington, and I don't recall that time, but it didn't line up with the 2 p.m. arriving at the church. The phone records show that he got to the area of the church sometime around about 4.15 p.m., and then we also have security footage, which shows what looks to be his car driving into the church area around that same time. And how long was he in that area of the church? He was in the area from about that time, about 4, 4.14, 4.15 p.m., until the phone records show him leaving around 7.45 p.m. So that's about three hours and 30 minutes. All right. And you asked him multiple times in the interview about how long he was in that area and... Did he ever say he was in there that, that long, three hours or so? No, he used the words, I swung by the church. Now, he said he swung by to check a sign. Are you aware of any sign there, at least at that time, that indicated a time of service? I'm not. Do you recall Kurt Morris's testimony in this trial? I do. Kurt Morris was asked about that, and he did, being somebody who lived there, also did not recall a sign being out there with church times. Now, the defendant also said in that interview, I talked to my friend, I wanted to go hiking, um, and I believe he said the name Kefley. We've heard from him in this case, right? Yes. Uh, anything in his cell phone record that shows he had a phone conversation with uh, Mr. Kefley? No, they did not talk on the phone that day. They did communicate, though, right? That's correct. And it was a text message? Two text messages between them, yes. And was it in reference to a hike? No. What, what was it in reference to? Kepley had text Mark asking him if he wanted to go to the swap meet the next day, and Mark said that he was not available. The next day being Sunday the 19th? Yes. All right. Um, you asked him, uh, the defendant, multiple times if he remembered stopping anywhere on the way back, and he said no. How long was he actually on the area of Sunset Crater? He was in that area from about 12.14 a.m. until about 3.33 a.m., so a little over three hours. 
Now, and you asked him multiple times again, how, when did you get back to the base? And he gave you a couple of different times. He said 8 or 9 p.m. on Saturday and also 1 to 2 on Sunday morning, a.m., right? Correct. Um, what does a surveillance video show as far as when he arrived at the base? The surveillance footage shows him arriving at his dorm right around 7 a.m. And the D-bids, what does that tell you? I misstated earlier, I believe. I think I said 6.57 earlier. And the D-bids show him coming in at 6.53 a.m. And does that correspond with the Nelos record as well? It does. Now, the defendant also said in this interview that he wanted to get back before it got dark. Uh, what time did it get dark that time of year in Farmington, let's say? In Farmington, I checked the sunset time, and it was 5.23 p.m. And we saw earlier with uh, Lieutenant Lurkins, we showed that surveillance video from the storage unit, and that did that correspond with what you recall uh, from that exhibit? Yes. Um, what about in Flagstaff? I can't imagine it's much different. What was it that time of year? No, it's pretty close. Uh, from my just internet search, it, I believe it was 5.43 p.m., the sun set in Flagstaff that day. All right. And what did your investigation show about the time he actually left Farm? Oh, I think you mentioned it was around 7. What time did he leave Farmington? He left the church area and began heading west around 7.45 p.m. All right. So uh, he would have been heading west, so he may have been in Farmington for some time after that. Is that fair? Yes, he would have had to sort of drive through that area to leave it. Clearly dark already at that time, right? Clearly dark. Now, you asked him a couple of times if he had been to Flagstaff any time after this trip, uh, this trip being the one on the 18th, um, and he said no. What, what did your investigation show? Well, it showed that he wasn't being truthful during that interview. The evidence I have, sh his phone records show that he went returned to Flagstaff February 21st, and the D-bids report and the surveillance footage show him returning in the early morning of January 22nd. We heard from Sev Dishman uh, in this case, and you were present for that, correct? I was. And he talked about how the Nelos records could be improved if someone was using Google Maps, for instance. Do you recall that? I do. Um, did the defendant mention using Google Maps? Yes, he told me he utilized Google Maps that day of January 18th. Did he also confirm uh, his email address that you used to retrieve his Google account information? Yes. Um, in the interview, you're discussing uh, his Mennonite upbringing. Um, he said, and, and then you mentioned that when you were talking about that, at least in an interview, that you saw some type of emotion from him. It, it's hard to tell in this video. Was there any emotion that you recall? Well, not much emotion overall. I, I really didn't see much of any emotion throughout the whole interview. But what I meant when I said that in the interview was I did just kind of feel a change in him when we talked about that. Um, maybe the best way to describe it was that his voice lowered a little bit. Um, but it's sort of hard to articulate it. Just the feeling that I got while speaking with him in person. All right. Otherwise, uh how would you describe his demeanor during the interview? Calm and unemotional. Now, you mentioned earlier that you obtained, during the investigation, uh, his cell phone, is that right? Yes. Actual device, the, the physical phone, right? Yes, I did. And you've reviewed the contents of that phone? I have. And that phone contains uh, text messages uh, as well as phone calls, and, and you can basically analyze the history, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, may I approach that? Yes, I do. And what is it? These are text messages between Mark and Sam on January 12th, 2020. All right. Earlier in this case from Sam Gooch, This is that same conversation. All right. And it contains only that, that conversation. Is that fair? Yes. All right. Move to admit 189. Objection. 189 is admitted.
permission to publish it. While we're on the subject, Detective, um, did you also review text messages regarding his brother giving a minute I a ticket? Yes, I did. All right. May I approach again, Judge? Yes, it is. No objection. One eighty eight submitted. Is there also a conversation about the part message? Yes. Handing you what's remarked at the one eighty six, is that contained conversation that it had with the person you introduced about this part? Yes. Which is at one eighty six. No objection. One eighty six is admitted. cell phone, does it allow you to create a timeline or a report that shows a timeline of events in that phone? Yes, you can filter in different ways and in this case particularly it's filtered to January 18th, 2020. All right, and what was that exhibit number that I handed you? 190. All right, and is that a, a timeline from that phone, that actual device of January 18th into the morning hours of January 19th? Yes. Move to admit one, not, I'm sorry, what did you say, 190? Yes. 190, thank you. Any objection? No. Nope. 190's admitted. Yes. Well, let me hand you what's been marked as 187. Uh, we heard a reference about that Google deletion record, um, and you testified earlier that you retrieved that from Google, is that right? Yes. And uh, that was in reference to a deletion record of the location on that particular device. Is that right? Or the, that particular Gmail account. For that particular, I'm sorry. And that would be the mgooch6666 account, right? Yes. Um, and that was the account that the defendant provided you during the interview, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, we heard from Mr. Dishman, we, and we saw that exhibit presented earlier. That exhibit that I handed you, uh, is that a converted time? In other words, AZ time of that deletion record? It is. All right. Move to admit. What number is that again? 187. 187. Thank you. Yeah. Foundation as to how it was converted, who converted it. So the objection to foundation is sustained. Have you reviewed the Google deletion record, the original record? I have. And have you reviewed this document? Yes, I have. And does it uh, accurately convert from the uh, UTC time to Arizona time? Yes. Move to admit 187. 187 is admitted. What was this in reference to? This is the conversation between Mark and Sam on February 23rd, 2020, about Mark getting his car detailed. Right. 
That means that this message was sent to that phone number, which I know is Sam Gooch's number, and there's also the name Sam. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we're going to, um, and I know we took our break. That's just the timing of it. We take our afternoon break because I go about an you know, hour and a half, as you know. So um, we are going to break uh, in just, uh, just a couple more minute, minute or two here. I just want to uh, talk about one thing with you, and then we're going to let you go for the day. And um, I'll go ahead and tell you the schedule tomorrow. So it's the schedule that you, we've told you about in the past, 9 to 4 tomorrow. So... Um, if you can still, if you can be in the jury room tomorrow, um, same time as I've been asking about uh, 8:45 a.m., so that we can um, be prepared for you and hopefully get you into the courtroom very close to nine, as we try to do every day uh, for continued testimony. Remember or not remember? We, so we had a question from one of the jurors about the schedule um, and referencing the schedule being nine to four on Friday. So let me just be clear that um, the, the court uh, and counsel advised you during jury selection and also um, in the, when I instructed you in the preliminary instructions that the schedule this week is nine to four. But remember what I also, and, that, and let me just say this, the attorneys and I have spoken on multiple occasions, including today, and they still believe we're on track to get the case to the jury, to you, for deliberation no later than Friday of this week. But remember what I also said in the preliminary instructions. Once the case goes to you, then you're in charge of your schedule. So um, if you're deliberating and the jury decides to go past four on Friday, then and you all have to be here if that's what the decision is by the jury. So remember, you set once, once the case, remember I said this during, a, during the preliminary instructions, once the case goes to you for deliberation, you're in charge of your schedule. I'm, I'm no longer in charge of it, you're in charge of it. So if you have any questions about that, um, write it on a note and we can address it tomorrow. But I hope that answers the juror's question about the schedule, potential schedule for Friday. And again, if you have any questions about it, please write a note, give it to Mike, and I'll do my very best to address it. So I'm gonna give you the admonition again. Remember the admonition. I'm sure it's burned into your memory now. Uh, please keep an open mind about the case. Do not formulate any opinions about the case. Please do not talk to anyone about the case. Do not let anyone talk to you about it. That includes each other. So we'll see you tomorrow. So we stand in recess for the evening.
Please be seated. And detective, you can step down if you like. Um, record will reflect the jury has been excused for the evening recess. All right, counsel, um, I want to address the issue that we were talking about sidebar so we can have it on the record. I re repeat. Sure. So I think we were looking at um, exhibit 186. It was being broadcast by counsel. Um, and then it shows up on the display as listing a phone number, but it also shows the name Sam in, I, I think, a blue color. Um, and I don't remember, it's back up on the board. Thank you, counsel. Um, I don't remember in my materials, and maybe I just got it in black and white. I don't remember the name Sam, but I don't remember the, the blue color. Um, if counsel can avow that that's absolutely the way it was, that wasn't amended or added, that's the, the, the exact report, um, then I would feel differently. But I thought it was changed. Thank you. All right. Judge, I can certainly avow that uh, there's been no manipulation other than to cut out the excess conversation that didn't relate to the Mennonite, or in this case, I guess, the car wash. Um, there was no manipulation. When you extract or, or develop a report from the Cellbrite, and Council has the actual report, you can, it'll load on your computer and you can just generate any report you want based on call logs or text messages or whatever. It, it'll just generate it like this. And so my understanding, and the, the detectives here can verify this, but my understanding is if there's a contact in the phone, it will list, it, list that underneath the the phone number, and I can show the court. There's a, on 190, Exhibit 190, uh, just that first one, there is no, there is no name attached to it because it's, my understanding is it's not a contact in the defendant's phone. Uh, you scroll down and there's Sam again listed there. So uh, this is exactly how it's produced. There's, there's nothing else we can do to amend it. It's a, it's, it shows up as a PDF. If you can leave that up for a second. So you're saying the Cellbrite report, this is how it prints out. Right, and you can see at the top of this one, at least on 190, it's a Cellbrite report. Right. Yeah. So if you continue to go down, just scroll for a second. So I just, I just had a question. If you keep going down. So is there some reason why, see where we see Sam, and then we see Sam Gooch? Is there some reason why in some places it just says Sam, and in other places it says Sam Gooch? I don't know, Judge. Honestly, uh, the only difference I see there is that it's a, from a call log and not the MMS, but I couldn't tell you. This, all I can say is this is how it's extracted, um, and this is the information that's provided from Cellbrite. And you've confirmed this with Detective Nagel? I was going <laughs> to let her say it, but yes, uh, she, it's her understanding that's the same thing. Again, this is just something that Celebrate generates. We didn't manipulate it. The police didn't address or manipulate this document anyway. Okay. Mr. No further. Thank All you right. For clarification. Thank you. All right. So I know that initially, sidebar, you indicated you might object, but now there's been the offer of proof, so to speak, by the state. So I take it there's no objection right now. Well, my objection's of record, but I think it's been resolved. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Anything further today? No, Judge. Thank you. All right, so um, I'll see you, uh, look for you about 8.45 tomorrow just in case you need to put anything on the record. Thank you. Stand in recess. Do we have a change of plate for me? As far as I know, it's going. Yeah, let's just do it.